Oh. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with I Wonder Who's Kissing Her Now That I'm Drafted. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, thousands of housewives will say to their grocers, Jell-O, please. And tomorrow night at dinner, thousands of families will say, Jell-O, please. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it certainly does. Jell-O is a bang of good dessert, a swell treat that everyone likes right from the very first shimmering spoonful. The vivid colors of Jell-O give this attractive dessert a bright, tempting beauty that no other dessert can surpass. And the Jell-O's intriguing flavor is just as refreshing as the juicy, ripe fruit itself. Jell-O is delightfully easy to make, too. It dissolves instantly in lukewarm water and sets in the twinkling of an eye. And Jell-O costs so little, you can afford to enjoy it as often as you please. By the way, strawberry, raspberry, and cherry Jell-O now taste better than ever. Each has a new, improved flavor obtained by using a natural flavor base artificially enhanced. And the result is something mighty delicious. So try a rich, glistening mold of Jell-O tomorrow. I wonder who's kissing her now that I've moved to Glendale, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride and pleasure that I present to you a man who next Friday, May the 9th, celebrates his 10th anniversary in radio, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. My goodness. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, Jalo again, this is Jack Dunny talking, and Don. I didn't know the whole part of it. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, gosh, fellas, I'm really getting a send off here. It's a wonderful tribute. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your thoughtful introduction. You know, I'd almost forgotten about my 10th anniversary, but I... <laughs> now, Phil, don't overdo it, you little rascal. <laughs> Gosh, this reception has made me all choked up here. Look, my big blue eyes are full of tears. Have you got a handkerchief, Mary? No, here's a blotter. <laughs> Never mind, I'll leave the tears in my eyes. It makes me look like Betty Davis. You know? <laughs> but no kidding, fellas, all this fuss and everything about my radio birthday is more than I expected. Really, I don't deserve it. Ah, yes, you do, Jackson. Why, certainly. You're a pioneer in radio, and you're worthy of this recognition. That's right, Jack. You've got it coming to you. Well... Thanks again, fellas, but I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, gosh, I don't know what to say. I feel like a fool. Look, I'm blushing. Hooray, you've got blood. <laughs> well, I'm just excited, that's all. Naturally, I'm, I'm flustered. Well, that's perfectly natural, Jack. After all, we're making great big fuss over you, and you've always been so modest and unassuming. Well, not always, Don. There are times when I'm a little on the hammy side. Of course, it doesn't show, but, uh, but it's there. Eh, Mary? Well, if you ask me... Who asked you? <laughs> Go away, Mary, please. Yeah, leave him alone, Mary. Say, Jackson, when you started out in radio, I'll bet you never thought you'd last ten years, did you? You said it, Phil. Ten years in this business is a long time. Gee, I'll never forget how nervous I was on my first broadcast. See, there I stood, 24 years old and scared to death. <laughs> Oh, boy, what I went through, huh? Uh, what was that age again? 37. Anyway, fellas, <laughs> as I started to tell you, that first broadcast was really a thrill. There I stood shaking like a leaf. Nervous, huh? Why, Don, I couldn't even hold the script. I thought I was gonna faint. 
But the announcer came over, put his arm around me and said, Take it easy, son. There's nothing to worry about. Just step up to that microphone and show him what you can do. And good luck to you, lad. Gee, he was a nice guy. By the way, Jack, who was the announcer on your first broadcast? Peter the Hermit. <laughs> now cut that out. Mary, for heaven's sake, will you please try and remember that this is my 10th anniversary. <laughs> fellas thanks thanks you can stop with that i'm a jolly good fellow now let's forget it now where was i you were telling us about your first radio program yeah what product were you selling in them days jackson well i was on the air for burgers black beauty buggy whips <laughs> buggy whips and this was only 10 years ago well old man burger was trying to bring back the horse Gosh, I'll never forget that program. We had a theme song and everything. A theme song? Yeah, I even remember it. It went like this. Now, let's see. What was that melody? Oh, yes. Dum, pa, pa, pum, pum, pum. Won't you buy our buggy whip? You will find that they are pips. If you want your horse to jump, he will go ka-lump, ka -lump. When you hit him on the rump with a burger's buggy whip. It really snapped. <laughs> of course, of course, fellas, that doesn't sound like anything now, but if you could have heard those eight voices behind me and a team of horses whinnying, <laughs> I tell you, it was sensational. Hey, Jack, whatever made you leave that program? Oh, it was one of those things. I went up to see old man Berger one day about a raise, and he whipped me with a Berger's buggy <laughs> whip. <laughs> But enough reminiscing about my early days. It's probably boring, everybody. No, no, this is very interesting, Jack. Uh, what program did you go on after Burger's Buggy Whips? Well, from there, I went on one of those early morning dramatic shows. The Heartbreaks of Hortense Hooligan. <laughs> I used to break her heart every morning at 7 a.m. I was pretty good. Huh? Oh, I remember that program, Jack. Were you the leading man? Yes, sir, that was me. I remember that show, too. It was awful. Well, it was so awful, Mary. Why'd you listen to it? Why didn't you turn it off? I was such a little girl, and I couldn't reach the dial. <laughs> Mary, that was only nine and a half years ago. And if I remember correctly, young lady, you didn't have any trouble peeking over that hosiery counter. <laughs> anyway, Don, if I'd have kept up with my dramatic work today, I might have been one of... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Congratulations on your anniversary. Thank you, Dennis. Oh, uh, oh, by the way, Dennis, uh, you haven't signed your contract yet for next season. Did you speak to your mother like I told you? Yes, I did. Well, what'd she say? She said it's not worth the Kleenex it's written on. <laughs> Dennis, in the first place, it's not written on Kleenex. And in the second place, let me give you a little advice. On my first radio job, I made the same mistake you did. I went to my boss, asked him for a raise, and he whipped me. Well, beat me, Daddy. I want one, too. <laughs> Dennis, this is no time to talk about money. This is my anniversary. And now that you're here, let's have your song. Okay. Hold it a minute. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Take it, Mary. All right, buddy, what are you waiting for? Did you ever hear about tipping, or do I have to enlighten you? <laughs> Oh, yes, a tip. Here's a dime for you. I'm sorry I overlooked it. Oh, don't mention it. This guy's nuts. Mary, uh, who's the telegram mm -mm 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 from? Huh? It's from Fred Allen. Fred Allen? What is that? Now, wait a minute. Now, stop her. What's the matter with you? Allen is not a jolly good fellow. All right, Mary, what's he got to say? Uh, dear Jack, congratulations, and I knew you'd leave your print and radio. You're just the heel that can do it. <laughs> hmm, what a rap. Why do I let him get away with that stuff? Why don't I do something about it? Why don't I beat him up? Because you're a coward. Oh, yes, that's it. Sing, Dennis. <laughs> Mary, save that wire. I'm going to send him ten awful words. <laughs> lovely world we knew has been struck by a bitter frost 
But my sister and I recall with a sigh A world we knew and loved and lost My sister and I remember still A tulip garden by an old Dutch mill And the home that was all our own until don't talk about that My sister and I recall once more The fishing schooners pulling in to shore And the door caught we hold in days before But we don't talk about that We're learning to forget the fear That came from a troubled sky we're almost happy over here, but sometimes we wake at night and cry. Oh, my sister and I recall the day we say goodbye. Very good, Dennis. Very good. Yes, sir. That was My Sister and I, sung by Dennis Day, our own Irish Nightingale. And now, ladies and gentlemen... I'm not a Nightingale, Mr. Benny. I'm Irish, though. I know you are, Dennis. I just called you a Nightingale as a figure of speech. And now, ladies and gentlemen... A Nightingale? No. I, mean, I know it's a bird. It happens to be a bird that sings beautifully. Oh. That's why I called you a Nightingale. It's meant as a compliment, that's all. Hmm. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Are you mad because I'm not a bird? <laughs> no, believe me, Dennis, I'm very happy that you're almost human. And now, ladies and gentlemen... It's a wonderful feeling, isn't it? <laughs> Certainly is. And now, folks... I'm tired of saying ladies and gentlemen again. And now, folks, in response to a number of requests, Mr. Don Wilson, the eminent American playwright, has written another of his famous one-act plays. Take it, Mr. Wilson. The scene, ladies and gentlemen, is the home of Mr. and Mrs. Boyle Heights in the little town of Eggplant, Missouri. It is 9 a.m., and as the curtain rises, Mr. Heights, who is a haberdasher, is dashing to his half. Well, wow. curtain music. <laughs> Well, goodbye, dear. I'm off to work. Give me my bear trap. I want to get customers today. Here you are, Boyle. Thank you, dear. By the way, dear, what are we having for dessert this evening? I thought we'd have jello, dear. Jello, dear? All right, I'll stop at our neighborhood grocer, dear, and buy a package. Is jello very dear, dear? No, it's economical, dear, and easy to make. And it comes in six delicious flavors, dear. <laughs> Strawberry deer, raspberry deer, cherry deer, orange deer, lemon, and lime deer. <laughs> well, I better be going, dear. I can't your umbrella. It looks like reindeer. <laughs> that sounded a little corny, dear. <laughs> anyway, I think I will. <laughs> Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, dear. Well, he's gone. You can come out of the closet now, dear. Here I am, dear. Kiss me. Hey, hey, what is this? So Mr. and Mrs. Height's son, who hasn't seen his daddy for years, comes out of the closet. Oh. And will Mr. Heights be in for a surprise that evening when he comes home with the jello? I thank you. Very good. That was excellent. You know, Don, dear, or Don, that was one of the cleverest plays you've ever written. It's got suspense and everything. It's one of those plots that you just can't wait to see what's going to happen. Well, as a matter of fact, Jack, I wrote a second act to it. 
The scene where you come home to dinner that same evening. And meet my son? Well, let's do it. Come on, Mary. Set the scene, Don. Okay. It's 7 o'clock that evening, ladies and gentlemen, and Mr. Boyle Heights is returning home after a busy day trapping customers. Curtain, music. <laughs> Quick, dear, hide under the sofa. Okay, dear. Quick. Come in, Boyley. <laughs> ah, good evening, dear. Hello, dear. Did you work hard today? Yes, dear. And my feet is killing me. <laughs> well, what's the surprise, dear? What surprise, dear? Our son, dear. Isn't he anxious to see his daddy? What son, dear? Our son, dear, that was hiding in the closet, dear. Where is he? Uh, did you bring the jello, dear? Never mind that. Now, there's no use lying, dear. I'm going to open that closet and find out who's in there. Now, open that door or I'll shoot. Aha! Who are you? Believe it or not, I'm a nightingale. <laughs> Dennis, my son! Well, Don, that second act was certainly a switch. Oh, well, I've got a third act, Jack, where later that same evening... Uh, thanks, you... Don, but it's too good for this program. That theater gill stuff. Hey, Phil, it's time for a band number. What's it going to be? Well, Jackson, we're going to play a real old-timer tonight in a swell tune. It's called Ida, Sweet as Apple Cider. Say, that is a good tune. You know, when I did my violin act in Vaudeville, Ida used to be one of my feature numbers. Be nice hearing it again. Go ahead, Phil. Oh, say, Jack, this being your anniversary, I think we ought to put the spotlight on you tonight. Now, how about playing a chorus of Ida on your fiddle? On my fiddle? Oh, say, I, I might at that. Don had opened his big, fat mouth. <laughs> well, Don's got a little sentiment in them. That's more than you have. Phil, can I borrow a fiddle from one of your violinists? You ask him. He doesn't speak English. <laughs> Never mind. I'll use my own. I happen to have it right here under my arm. Uh, wait a minute. I'll tune it up. Lock, that'll help. Just the same. I'm going to tune it up. I'm not going to start out off key. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Charlie, give me A, will you? <laughs> there, that's it. <laughs> uh, incidentally, fellas, when I did this number in my vaudeville act, I used to do a lot of tricks in the second chorus. You know, I'd hold my violin on my head and play it, and then between my knees. And then for a finish, I'd put the bow between my teeth and move the violin up and down. Try that now, and your teeth will move up and down. <laughs> Mary, the next time you say I have false teeth, you're going to make the June payment on them. <laughs> All right, fellas, let's go. Ida, sweet as apple cider. <laughs> calling when the rain at Emma falling. Oh, come out in the silvery moonlight. I'll love we whisper so soft that love. I'm a Yankee Doodle kiddo. At the girls, I tip my lid off. Seems though can't live without you. <laughs> Listen, oh, I do. This is really jazzy. Everybody thinks it's nasty. Yes, my Ida, I idolize you. I love you, I do, deed I do. <laughs> I 
renew my violin and get this program going. No kidding, man. <laughs> that was Ida, Sweet as Apple Cider, sung by Phil Harris with a violin solo by Jack Benny, that syncopated boy. <laughs> well, how'd you like it, fellas? Oh, that was swell, Jack. Very good, Mr. Benny. No kidding, Jackson. That was okay. Huh, Mary? It was a lot better than I expected. Thanks, Mary. What I expected shouldn't, shouldn't happen, happen to, to a, a dog. dog. <laughs> that I knew. Oh. Well, I haven't played my violin a long time. I am a little rusty. Anyway, thanks for helping me out, Phil. That was a nice touch on my anniversary. And that ain't all, Jackson. Shall we give it to him now, fellas? Give me what? You tell him, Don. Tell me what? Well, Jack, we've all been with you for a long time, and we felt that the least we could do on this occasion was to buy you a gift as a token of our love and loyalty. Well, so you devils have been holding back on me, eh? Well, where's the present? Where is it? The men are out in the hall with it, Mr. Wilson. Men? What can it be? All right, carry it in, boys. Right this way, fellas. Now take it easy. Don't drop it. Oh, my goodness. Look at that enormous crate. See, it takes four men to carry it. And set it down here, boys. Easy now. Gosh, it's certainly heavy. Well, quick, quick, open it up. I'm dying to see what it is. Okay, men, open it up. Gee, this is the biggest present I ever got in my life. Look at those men, they're working like fever. By golly, I haven't been so excited since our friends were really so close. Gee whiz! Hurry, fellas, I'm dying to see it. Well, I... Really, I'm just... No, well, well, thanks. Uh... <laughs> well, thanks, boys. Well, there it is. Get out of my way, Don. I can't see the present. Oh, pardon me, Jack. Well, Jackson, are you surprised? <laughs> oh, my goodness. How you like it? Oh, fellas, just what I needed. A cigarette lighter with 50 gallons of fluid. <laughs> Oh! Well, by golly! Isn't it well, Mr. Benny? Oh, gee, I can't get over it. Just think, I'll be able to light my cigars with this lighter until I'm 8,000 years old. Uh, 10,000 if I'm conservative. Oh, what a present. Well, we didn't know what to get you, Jack. You've got everything. Everything and a barrel of oil. Well, thanks. All right, boys, roll out the barrel, leave it in the hall. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Jack. I wrote a poem that goes with that present. Oh, goody, that's all I need now. <laughs> Never mind the poem. Let her read it, Jackson. It's very apropos for Paul. <laughs> apropos for Paul? Phil, you've got the right word, but you ought to have brakes put on it. <laughs> all right, Mary, let's hear the poem. It's my own fault for being on the radio so many years. What's the title of it? Old Man Benny, he just keeps puffing along. I'm warning you, Mary, this better be good. <laughs> now go ahead. <clears throat> oh, Jack Benny, oh, Jack Benny, I salute you, Mary Liz. A gall darn I do not give. I don't give a gall darn either. You have stood the acid test, and you've had a great success. People think you are a mess. So do I. <laughs> Mary, you bees mean to me. <laughs> Mary, you bees mean to me. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Uh -uh. <laughs> That's a silly show, folks. How we love you, dear Jack Benny. How we hope Hold that... it. Hold it. Wait till I answer the phone. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. All right. What do you want? Boss, I'm telling you for the last time, I don't live in the same house with Mr. Billsey. He's crazy every day. Oh, you're always worrying about our border. What's he done now? He came down to eat a little while ago dressed in a dinner jacket. Well, it's Sunday night. What's wrong with a dinner jacket? That's all he had on. No pants, no shoes, no socks, no nothing. <laughs> oh, well, he's, he's absent-minded. We know that. He's a little peculiar. Then right in the middle of the dinner, he sent the mashed potatoes back to the kitchen. So what is wrong with the mashed potatoes? He wanted lumps put in them. <laughs> Well, next time, make him with lumps. Believe me, Rochester, there's nothing wrong with Mr. Billingsley. 
He's just a little eccentric. Eccentric? Yes. Boss, when a man walks with a hog tree all afternoon, eccentric ain't apropos. <laughs> what? Mr. Billingsley's been waltzing with the hall tree? He calls it Dolores. Dolores? Why the romance, boss? They're flying to Yuma tonight. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's the silliest thing he's ever done. Well, humor him, Rochester. Do something. Maybe I ought to lump him instead of the potato. <laughs> no, don't touch him. I'll be home right after the broadcast. Meanwhile, tell him the hall tree is married already. <laughs> See you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? The gas man came today. <laughs> oh, he did, eh? You see, Rochester, and you thought Carmichael ate him. What did he want? He wanted to know what happened to the other gas man. <laughs> oh, forget it, will you? Goodbye. Gosh, I, I hope Mr. Billingsley doesn't go too far off the beam. Well, he's the best boarder I've ever... How we love you, dear Jack Benny. Oh, yes, the poem. More than ever, deed we do. And we hope that we will always keep on loving mm -mm you. <laughs> oh, get this over with. Dennis loves you, Philby loves you, Donzie loves you, so do I. So does Sammy, so does Roger, so does Bert and Apple Pie. <laughs> treat, ladies and gentlemen, in the spirit of the season, try Jell-O's new spray salad that will lend zest to any meal. A salad with a grand, tantalizing goodness, all ready to add brightness and gaiety to a springtime menu. It's a salad that's easy to make, too. Simply prepare a package of lemon Jell-O, as you usually do, add one tablespoon of vinegar, and a chill until slightly thickened. Next, fold in one cup of chopped nut meats and one cup of diced celery. Then mold and serve on crinkly green lettuce with a dab of golden mayonnaise. And there's one of the swellest salads you ever tasted. Delicious combination of chopped nut meats, crisp diced celery, and rich sunny lemon jello. Incidentally, friends, this is National Restaurant Week. And I hope a lot of you will take the occasion to drop in at your favorite restaurant where you'll find a grand jello dessert or salad on the menu. Visit your favorite restaurant this week and enjoy a delicious meal that includes a treat that's really tops, Jell-O. Gee, I was thrilled with my violin solo. <laughs> this is the uh, last number of the 31st program in the current Jell-O series. And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And fellas, I can't tell you how happy you all made me on my 10th anniversary. Gee, it was... Stop, will you? Good night, folks. K-E-L-L-O Say, folks, you want to hear a swell echo? Well, listen. Jell-O! Jell-O puddings! Jell-O! Jell-O puddings! Now, Frank, Frank Bingman. What kind of an echo is that? Jell-O puddings aren't the same as Jell-O. Oh, I know it, but they're made for the same people. Jell-O, you see, is a grand gelatin dessert. And Jell-O puddings are rich, creamy puddings full of the most delightful and mellow flavor and tempting goodness. So always ask for both. Whenever you buy Jell-O, get Jell-O puddings in all three flavors, chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch. Order Jell-O puddings tomorrow. Order Jell-O puddings tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles.